Have you ever wondered about alternate tunings? How you can start experimenting with them today? Where they came from? Who made them popular? Well, wonder no more because in today's show, I'm going to answer those very questions by breaking down five different incredible alternate tunings. Hey, Tech family, and welcome to episode 169 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is designed to bring fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC members. This week, you'll be meeting Denny. Denny's a guitar geek who, after a career in law enforcement, the Army, and two years deployed in Iraq, found the guitar and it saved his life. You're going to learn about Denny and how he's paying it forward here in a bit. Plus, I'm going to be telling you some acoustic guitar news you can use, but first, I want to dig into alternate tunings. So grab your tuner, grab your guitar, and let's get started. We're going to be looking at five different tunings today. Dad Gad, Open D, Open D Minor, Open G, and C Add 4 tuning, which I'll call Nick Drake tuning because that's where I first heard it. Now, I have a little bit of a confession to make because the reason I'm doing this episode is because I wished I had it when I first started experimenting with alternate tunings because alternate tunings scared the hell out of me when I first was kind of experimenting with them. I didn't know how to get my guitar into the tuning. And then once I got there, I was like, well, what do I do? So I want to answer those very questions for each of these tunings today. But first, let's kind of give an overview of each tuning. Actually, I'll take it one tuning at a time. Let's kick things off with Dad Gad because that's the first one that I actually messed with when I was a young budding guitar player. And Dad Gad has an interesting background. Its origins aren't necessarily clear. As you'll see with a lot of these tunings, it's tough to trace them back to a specific point. But in terms of the guitar world, I would say Dad Gad started around the 60s or came to popularity around the 60s with Davy Graham. And it's said that he took a trip to Morocco, heard an oud player, I believe, and came back and adapted the tuning that the oud player was using for the acoustic guitar. Dad Gad was quote unquote born. Now it likely has much earlier roots, maybe in North Africa, but for the sake of placing it on a guitar timeline, let's just say that was the story. Now in terms of who ended up popularizing Dad Gad tuning, I'm going to peg Davy Graham because he really did. He, he really kind of brought Dad Gad to the forefront, but also I'm going to cite Led Zeppelin. Now, funny thing is, is I had never really heard Davy Graham, so I wanted to listen to some of his music in preparation for the show. So I'm listening to him play this folk tune, and I'm like, wow, that sounds a lot like Led Zeppelin's, I think it's Black Mountainside, I think that's the tune. So then I listened to Led Zeppelin's Black Mountainside, and I thought, wait a minute, that's the same tune. So there's a little bit of borrowing going on here, but nonetheless, Dad Gad certainly blasted into popularity with uh, Led Zeppelin playing the song like Black Mountainside and of course Cashmere as well. But we should just know as guitar geeks, we got to give credit where credit is due and cite Davy Graham. Nonetheless, Dad Gad is a super cool tuning. It's a modal tuning, so it doesn't necessarily have a sense of resolve, which you'll find out when we start messing with it. So grab your guitar and let's get into Dad Gad tuning. Dad Gad tuning is actually pretty simple to get into. All you have to do is take your low E string and tune it down to a D. Your A string stays the same. Your D string stays the same. Your G string stays the same. Your B string goes down to an A, and your high E string goes down to a D. So you get this kind of a mysterious sound when you strum. And it's an easy tuning to remember because, well, the name of the tuning spells out the actual notes in the tuning low to high, dad gap. So now once you're in this tuning, what do you actually do? And I was trying to think of something fun to show you, and I thought, well, let's do that cool descending part of Cashmere by Led Zeppelin. And it's actually pretty simple to do. It involves two different chord shapes, and one comes right after the next. And we'll say that one of them is stacked, and the other one is staggered. So I'm going to show it to you on the 12th fret, and then you just have, simply have to replicate it down the neck. It sounds like this. So your ring finger will be on the 12th fret of the high string, the now D string, and your middle finger will be on the 12th fret of the G. You can go ahead and strum that, it sounds pretty darn cool. So that's one strum on this chord shape, and then you lift up your middle finger and drop your index finger to the 11th fret of the G. That's the staggered shape, right? So we go stacked, staggered. And that's on the 12th fret, and then the staggered shape goes down to the 11th fret. 
we do the same thing between the 10th and the 9th. Stacked, staggered, and then we move down to the 7th fret, stacked, staggered, 5th fret, stacked, staggered, 3rd fret, stacked, staggered, and then to finish it off, we do a little 3-2 open on the low D string. Okay, so all together that would sound like this. Pretty fun way to start experimenting with dadgad. Now let's move on to open D major tuning, which is also known as Vestipole tuning. Now, in terms of this tuning on the guitar, it actually originated somewhere in the mid 1800s, and it's related to a piece of sheet music entitled The Siege of Sevestipole, shortened to Vestipole to name the tuning, which was specific to play that particular piece of music. It was a parlor piece of music played again in the mid 1800s. Now, I am absolutely positive this tuning was used prior to that point, but in terms of documentation, that's where we can cite its intersection with the written documentation and guitar. Now, in terms of who popularized it, this goes straight to the Delta Blues. Uh, Mississippi Fred McDowell, uh, Robert Johnson, uh, Elmore James even used it. But then if we bring it forward into more popular music in the 60s and 70s, uh, Joni Mitchell, Richie Havens all kind of brought this open tuning to the forefront. I like to think of it more in the blues realm, but it really is applicable in all sorts of genres of music, which you'll come to find out. So grab your guitar and let's get it into open D tuning. Open D tuning isn't that difficult to get into, and it's not that much different than dadgad except for one note. So here's how you tune your guitar for open D major tuning. Your low E string comes down to a D, A string stays the same, D string stays the same, the G string comes down to an F sharp, the B string comes down to an A, and the high E string comes down to a D. Now I want to show you two different things with this tuning so you can start experimenting right now. And the first is to kind of pull the bluesiness out of the tuning. And you can do this pretty easily. You can flat pick it, you can finger pick it, but all you have to remember is open string, third fret, or third fret, open string. And you can do it on any of the strings. Check this out. you can start to hear some of that bluesiness. One of my favorite things to do is to finger pick and just target those high three strings. It would sound something like this. So that's one thing you can do to start experimenting with open D tuning. The other thing is to just play a major scale on the high string. That would sound something like this. Start out open. 2nd fret, 4th fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret, 11th fret, and 12th fret. Now, that sounds lame. I'm not going to argue with you. But, with an open tuning, you can actually strum all the strings with those single notes fretted, and it turns into kind of a symphony. Check this out. experiment with that for quite some time and start having a blast with open detuning nearly immediately. It's about to get real sad in here because we're going to look at open D minor tuning. D minor, the saddest of all keys. It's a Spinal Tap reference. Anyways, I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find much on the origins of this tuning. So I'm gonna chalk it up to it being discovered and spread through the folk tradition, meaning somebody likely heard that minor sound, wanted to emulate it on their guitar. They did so, another guitar player heard it and they did the same exact thing, so on and so forth. Open D minor tuning was born. In terms of who popularized this tuning, there's two figures that I'm gonna mention here. They're not the only ones, but I think that they are the strong front runners of pushing D minor tuning forward. Number one is Skip James. Uh, so very much in the Delta Blues tradition, Skip James used D minor tuning almost exclusively. And the other is John Fahey and the whole American primitive guitar movement. Now, John Fahey used a bunch of different tunings. D minor was only one of very many, but it popped up in that genre. So I feel like I needed to mention it. So like I said, things are about to get sad. So grab your guitar and get ready to uh, shed a tear or two and explore D minor tuning.
D minor tuning may be the most fun tuning to mess with, and here's how to tune your guitar for open D minor tuning. Your low E string comes down to a D, A string stays the same, D string stays the same, your G string comes down a full step to an F note, your B string comes down to an A, and the high E string comes down to a D. And when you strum all the strings, it should sound like a sad D minor chord. Now, in terms of experimenting with this tuning, one of the things I love to do is to play a D minor pentatonic scale on the high D string. And I like to finger pick with it, so we'll, we'll actually take this in steps. Let's first mess with the scale. We've got open, high D, third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, tenth fret, and twelfth fret. Okay, so that's open, three, five, seven, 10, 12. Cool, again, by itself, not that exciting, but with this tuning, we can strum everything if you want. All right, so that's fun. And it's actually really cool to hand a kid a guitar in this tuning and show them those fretted positions because they can be making music within within seconds, really, um, because they kind of have those free spirits. They, they just enjoy experimenting, which I encourage you to do as well. But like I said, I like to finger pick with those fretted positions because it kind of conjures up even some drony blues. So what I'm gonna do is my thumb's just gonna alternate between the low D and the middle D. And all I'm gonna do is pinch those higher strings, or pinch those high notes along with the thumb. Okay, so it's gonna sound like this. Not super crazy, but a really fun way to start finger picking with this. The more you get comfortable, the more you can start staggering your finger picking and creating some really interesting lines. All in, of course, D minor tuning. Now it's time to come back to Happy Land because we're about to visit Open G Major Tuning. Open G Tuning has a very interesting history because it's actually documented. Right around the 1830s, there was a very popular parlor song named Spanish Fandango. To play this song, right on the sheet music, it said you had to be in Open G Tuning. The association between the song and the tuning was so strong that Open G Tuning started to be called Spanish Tuning. A pretty interesting factoidal nugget, if I do say so myself. Now, as guitar geeks, we well know that open G tuning likely went, or likely started much prior to 1830, but in terms of written documentation, we'll go with 1830 to kind of place it on the guitar timeline. Now, who popularized this tuning? Well, we have to go right to the Delta Blues. We've got Mississippi John Hurt, Furry Lewis, Elizabeth Cotton, Muddy Waters, amongst many others. And in the modern area, we have, in the modern era, I should say, we have Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones using open G tuning on his Telecast. Pretty cool stuff to know that this tuning is so widely used in so many different genres. And all that being said, grab your guitar and let's start exploring open G tuning. Tuning your guitar to open G major tuning only takes a couple of alterations. You take your low E string down to a D, your A string comes down to a G, your D string stays the same, the G string stays the same, the B string stays the same, and your high E string comes down to a D. Now, I was trying to think of how I can get you to start with open G tuning right away. And I thought, okay, major scale. But the problem is we already did that on D tuning, but it's actually not a problem at all because you can apply a lot of these same principles to the various tunings. So what we're gonna do is double what we did in open D tuning, but do it on open G tuning, okay? So we're gonna be targeting the G strings on this, okay? That's kind of funny to say. Anyways, we'll be targeting the G strings, which ends up being uh, your fifth string and your one, two, three, uh, your third string. Okay, so fifth and third, you can pinch them together just to make sure they sound like they're in unison, because they should be. Now, uh, in terms of fretted positions, we'll be fretting it open, so not fretting it at all. Uh, the second fret of each, and I like to use my middle and ring finger for this. The fourth fret, 
The fifth fret, you should be noticing a pattern here. It's the same major scale sequence we did for D major. And then the seventh fret, the ninth fret, the 11th fret, and the 12th fret. So we're doubling our fretting power here, and ultimately that allows us to create some lusher, some more lush, lusher, whatever the proper term is. It allows us to create some fuller sounding kind of chords. So we're gonna strum right along with this following that same pattern, but fretting two strings. So it's gonna be open, second, fourth, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, twelfth. And you can do that in any order you want to. It's just a nice way to start getting familiar with open G major tuning. The final tuning you're going to learn today is C add 4 tuning. It's a little bit of an oddball. It's C G C F C E. Now, historically, there's not much documentation of this tuning, but it's very strongly tied to Nick Drake, so much so that I'm just going to call it Nick Drake tuning. He used it on a ton of different songs, and it kind of has, well, that signature Nick Drake sound built within it, just by virtue of the tuning. So in terms of who popularized it, we're just going to go ahead and cite Nick Drake as well. Now, I want you to pay attention to this particular lesson because... Later on, I guess in the future of Acoustic Tuesday, we're going to be doing a show dedicated to Nick Drake. So this will certainly parlay quite well into that show. I should also mention that this tuning likely popped up in other areas of music before, but I strongly associate it with Nick Drake, so we're just going to run with it. C add 4 tuning, or Nick Drake tuning, is the oddball of the group, but it's not that difficult to get to. So here's how you tune your guitar. Your low E string comes down to a C. Your A string comes down to a G. The D string comes down to a C. The G string comes down to an F. The B string goes up a half step to a C. It's the only string that you're tuning up, and it's only a half step. Half step. And then the high E string stays the same. And that gives you a nice, beautiful C add 4 chord. It's kind of a nice, uh, flowery, luscious sounding chord. Now, you can go through kind of the normal explorations in open tuning here. You can target a C string. You've got uh, three of them. And you can play a major scale on that, of course. Open, second, fourth, fifth, seventh, ninth, eleventh, twelfth. Do the full strumming thing. Actually, prefer it on the lower strings. But since this is Nick Drake tuning, I thought it'd be fun to kind of give a nod to Nick Drake without playing the full song. Uh, so we're going to play just kind of a little part of a Nick Drake tune here. And what we'll end up doing is hammering onto the second fret of the F string. Okay, so automatically it kind of has this Nick Drake vibe. So Pink Moon is, is the song we're playing. Sorry, I didn't even mention it. Um, or the Pink Moon is the song we're alluding to. Uh, so we'll hammer on to the second fret of the F string. And then grab the fourth fret of the middle C string. Second fret of the middle C string. And then open. Okay, so it sounds like this. So not, not, we're not going into the full song here, but I just wanted to kind of give a nod to Nick Drake since we are calling this Nick Drake tuning. Uh, if you want to explore it further, there's a couple of bar chords you can do that do end up in Pink Moon as well. Uh, well the first chord is not a bar chord. It's just holding down that second fret of the F string. And then the second chord is barring everything at the fifth fret and then holding that F string down at the seventh fret. And then moving that bar chord up two, up two frets so that it spans the seventh and the ninth. So there you have it. A quick little guide to C add 4 tuning or Nick Drake tuning. And I think the more you plunk around with it, the more you'll find little morsels of Nick Drake and his songwriting and his guitar tone in there. Since you've had a chance to feast on some alternate tunings, I have a question for you. Which song turned you on to alternate tunings? Which song did you stumble upon that helped you discover that alternate tunings exist? 
For me, it's actually two songs. Number one was Cashmere by Led Zeppelin, and number two was She Talks to Angels by The Black Crows. Both great songs, and both songs that when I looked them up, I saw that the tuning was something other than standard. So those helped me discover alternate tunings, but what helped you discover alternate tunings? Let me know in the comments below. Now I'd like to introduce you to a fellow guitar geek and Tony's Acoustic Challenge member whose guitar journey started about a year ago. And actually, the guitar ended up saving his life. This is Denny M, and Denny M is just celebrating his first tack anniversary. His story is equal parts inspiration and perseverance, and without further ado, here it is. This is my first official tack anniversary. I could not be more proud to belong to such a great community. I'm retired from law enforcement after 30 years, as well as the U.S. Army after 33 years, with two years in Iraq. I've seen more death and carnage that I pray no one ever has to. I've had 20 surgeries and 10 within seven years, 2012 to 2019. One year ago today, I watched a promotional video and was captivated. It was not only Tony trying to convince me to do the 30 day challenge, but to stay watching the video. He did both and I immediately joined TAC and within one month became a life member. I've been diagnosed with manic depression, PTSD, let alone chronic pain from the 20 surgeries. This saved my life literally. Listening to the Daily Lessons, Acoustic Tuesday, the monthly live parties, and the Jam Club, I went from not knowing a single thing about the guitar, other than that it was wood and called a stringed instrument, to being able to make music. In fact, today is my wife's birthday, and she came to me and said she loved listening to me practice as I play beautifully. This was the single most greatest compliment I have received. I'm learning so much, not only the basics, but I'm starting to understand more advanced chords, rhythms, music theory, etc. I've listened to Tony and have placed a guitar in almost every room of my home. Since joining last year, I have bought, sold, and traded over 25 guitars and now have seven in my personal collection. I personally do not believe there is enough hours in the day to play this instrument. I went through the Guitars for Vets program through the Veterans Administration and was gifted a Yamaha FG800, which will stay with me for life. One, because of where it came from, and two, the last three digits of the serial number is my daughter's birth date and the first three-digit pin used when pins first came out. I'm now volunteering at the VA to assist other vets to learn how to play guitar. I'm not sure as to why we do not make this mandatory. I mean music, as it truly brings a different person to life. Thank you, Tony, the Windy City Half and Whole Notes, and especially my dear wife, Elise, who listens to the bad and the good and most of all, still loves me. Well, Denny, I want to thank you so much for your service and your story. What an incredible story on so many, so many levels. Number one, the fact that you started a year ago and you've made such amazing progress and more importantly, discovered a part of yourself that was always there and the guitar helped bring it out. Secondly, the fact that you're paying it forward. After having gone through the Guitars for Vets program, you're now volunteering to help other vets discover the amazing healing power of music that you did. I think that's incredible. And number three, the fact that you're playing with other people in your first year is so darn cool. So uh, Denny, congratulations on your first year at Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Congratulations for being a guitar geek. And it sounds like it's turned into kind of a family event that your wife hears you practicing and everything. It's just so awesome. And I wish you the best in your guitar journey. Thank you so much for sharing your story. The Acoustic Tuesday show is nearly at its end, but first I want to share with you some acoustic guitar news that you can use. First up on my list is a documentary that you need to know about, especially if you're a Beatles fan. Now, I just found out about this. It's coming out later this year on August 27th, just a couple days before my birthday, by the way. It's entitled The Beatles Get Back. It's a documentary directed by Peter Jackson, who restored and basically brought to light some footage from the Let It Be sessions. This is rare, never before seen footage. And just looking at the trailer, it's pretty darn incredible. I am super excited to see this and I cannot wait. Now I wanted to show a trailer for you here right now on the Acoustic Tuesday show, but just because it has the words the Beatles in it, I was scared we were going to get dinged for a copyright. So I'm not going to include the trailer. However, make sure to check it out. The Beatles Get Back documentary, again, coming out August 27th. Next up on my list is a pinball machine. You might not know this about me, but I lust after having a pinball machine at home. Now, I know we already talked about Led Zeppelin a little bit, but Stern Pinball just released a Led Zeppelin pinball machine. Yes, a Led Zeppelin pinball machine. If the stars weren't ever aligned before, they certainly are aligned now. As a Led Zeppelin fan, as a pinball fan, I feel like I need this in my home. 
Next up on my list is a video series from Tom Sands that you as a guitar geek need to be aware of. It's the introducing series on his YouTube channel. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. You just need to know about Tom Sands' YouTube channel, period. There's plenty of educational content on there, geeky tool stuff, guitar geeky things, and this series that I'm referring to right now, the introducing series, where Tom sits down, introduces the guitar that he just made, tells the stories that went into the guitar, or the stories behind the guitar, I should say, and he pairs it with whiskey. Let's go ahead and have a sneak peek of the most recent one he released, which involves the guitar named Lucky. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Introducing. Today we are going to take a look at Lucky. favorite whiskies. This is Lagavulin, 16 year old. All right, so Lucky, Model M. Let's start with this Redwood soundboard. Lucky Strike Redwood. So Lucky Strike refers, is, it's, is the name given to um, this piece of wood by the, the guy who felled the original tree. A gentleman um, named Craig Carter. He was a big uh, lover of Redwood. He would name many of his the his special logs that he found lucky strike is his most famous and it's it's easy to see why it's some of the most beautiful um redwood i think i've ever seen i remember when i took delivery of this wood originally and opened up the package i was just absolutely blown away and then even more so when i got this guitar back from finish the cross grain silking the medullary rays just absolutely burst off the soundboard the grain is really tight straight and even it's got this absolutely gorgeous orangey peach coloration to it it's even it's just absolutely everything that you would want um, from a soundboard Pretty great series by Tom Sands. Again, make sure to check out his YouTube channel. And I would recommend subscribing because he puts out a ton of guitar geek centric content. On to the next piece of news that I have for you. And it's really less news and more of something you should be aware of. And again, it finds us on YouTube and it's brought to you by Gibson TV. And it's a series called The Collection. Now, this isn't straight ahead acoustic guitars. So I wasn't sure I was even going to include it on today's show, but it's very guitar geeky and I find it incredibly fun to watch. It's hosted by Mark Agnesi and essentially he goes around and visits people with these insane guitar collections. Yes, it's a little Gibson heavy, but there's some other guitars in there as well. And it's just fascinating to see how vast some of these collections are. Let's take a quick sneak peek into when Mark visited Joe Bonamassa and holy smokes, the place is called Nerdville for a reason. He has so much memorabilia, so many guitars, and a story behind each and every one. Let's take a look. Very cool case. Yeah. This is a Guild case. Very cool case. Somebody decided to do some folk art on it and loved Charlie Patton. I love Charlie Patton. This came from my father's guitar shop in the 90s, and we kept it, you know, God, since, since you know, 25 years. And I just loved it. It was like Patton and picture of Charlie Patton. And you know, it's like it's like, you know, it's it just there's a picture of Robert Johnson on there. It was just it's killer. All kinds of, yeah. Blind Lever and Jefferson, everything. So inside this case is a very rare guitar that has nothing to do with any of the individuals on, on the, the case. case. Ah, what oh, is this? Went in Nashville. Went in the 615. This is a grammar guitar made in Nashville, Tennessee, about 1969. And yeah. it's a Johnny Cash signature, signature model. model. And yeah. I'm lucky enough to own two of these. This one here is the one I played um, the song Driving Towards the Daylight on. And it's a great studio instrument because it's very even sounding. It's a very rare guitar. Not many people have ever seen a Johnny Cash model. The final news nugget I have for you today is also brought to you by Gibson TV, and it's entitled The Scene. And this again finds host Mark Agnesi visiting various cities and going to the landmark spots that help define that city's music scene. The clip you're about to look at finds Mark going to his former place of employment, Norm's Rare Guitars. He sits down with Norm and talks about how Norm got in the guitar business, why he loves it, and there's just cool stories that abound. Let's have a look. How did you chase down the guitars for the store? 
Well, you have to kind of be creative if you could. We would run ads in the newspapers, wanted to buy your guitar, looking for older Gibson, Fender, Martin, you know. Uh, and, you know, we were trying to figure out ways to, you know, get to these old guys that had these guitars. And my wife Marlene said, why don't you put an ad for one of the guitars in the horses for sale section? I said, what? She goes, you know, cowboys played guitar. That makes some sense. I went, I don't know. And I did it, and I scored a lot of guitars, so I have to give her credit for that. And on that note, we'll wrap up Acoustic Tuesday, episode 169. But now without taking a quick sneak peek and see what's happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Next week, we'll talk about tone terminology. Yes, how to talk guitars like a pro. So when you go into a store, you can talk to the guitar salesperson and convey the sound that you have in your mind so they can match you with the right guitar and get you on the right track. And I think you'll be surprised at some of the tips and tricks I'm going to offer during that show. That's all happening next week on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Remember, you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time here on YouTube. And also remember, your guitar progress, however you define it, is only as good as your guitar routine. So invest in your guitar routine and have fun every single day that you play. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar Geeks Unite!